My name is Thais Gibson and I'm the co-owner and creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video and in this video I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to get out of a trauma bond. So we're going to talk about six key ways to release yourself from a trauma bond and what this all really entails. Um, and these are really in-depth um, tools so keep in mind like you might need to um, work with somebody on this, maybe work with a therapist on this, um, or really take the time to dive into each of these layers. But I'm, I'm going to go like really in depth in this video specifically. Um, before I dive into this content, please know we are still doing a sale to support our community. It's a with you coupon 25% off link in the description box below and one um, in this video or like as a card in this video specifically. And going into the fall, we are adding um, extra connection webinars. So we are doing um, mastermind groups. We are doing um, different dynamics where we'll do like a morning and evening routine and our attachment coaches will be leading those. So we should have an event most days of the week, um, at least going into December, where people can participate, connect with people over video um, and hopefully relieve themselves of some of the isolation um, that might be happening in the world at this time. And then of course, do all the courses, the coursework as well. So um, let's talk about this. Number one, I, I'm going to say the first way of getting out of a trauma bond is to seek help. And I'm sort of putting a disclaimer, like, again, you should leave immediately if you find any form of abuse apparent in your relationship, and you should take it very seriously, because um, these things are very serious matters. Um, and then number two, and so this could be like hire a local therapist, right? Go see somebody who you can have a conversation with if you find yourself in this dynamic. Um, now, some other things that are going to be really important as you do that work, and if you are seeing somebody um, in a therapeutic context, it's really important that you start by feeling your feelings. Again, a, a big reason why we put up with things that are not okay and are not healthy are because we have a lack of empathy in relationship to self. It can either be because we're so hypervigilantly um, feeling other people's feelings outside of ourselves that we don't realize like, oh my goodness, this is how I'm being affected. And so we're not tuned into ourselves. Um, or it could be because like we're actually disconnected from ourselves as a coping mechanism because of past traumas. And this has become a patterned way that we operate in the world. And so this can be like, you know, you're not even like in your body, feeling your physical emotions in your body and where they're taking place, not noticing when something feels bad for you or diminishing or being able to repress your feelings and dim them out or numb them out. And as long as we're doing that, we don't realize the full magnitude of what's happening in unhealthy situations and how these things are really impacting us and making us feel. So it's a really important step. Number three establish conscious boundaries. Like most people in trauma bonds or unhealthy relationship dynamics haven't sat down in advance and been intentional and said, what are my non-negotiables in a relationship? What are my boundaries ahead of time? Let me write them out. What is okay for me and what isn't? And can I do this in terms of my time boundaries, my mental boundaries, meaning my thoughts, opinions, beliefs in the world? Um, and am I repressing those in my relationship to stay safe or to avoid conflict and, and just being agreeable all the time? Um, emotional boundaries, okay? Like what am I taking on emotionally? Where am I taking on that person's emotions instead of feeling my own? Physical boundaries, of course, big one. Very self-explanatory. Sexual boundaries, of course, big one. Very self-explanatory again. And material boundaries, like are people violating my property? Are people taking my things, not giving them back? Are people borrowing money, not giving it back? these sorts of dynamics, okay? And this is really important in terms of our boundaries as a whole, okay? So you can dive into, um, um, we have a full boundaries course that's very in-depth about boundaries, how to identify your boundaries, different processes to do so, how to set all your boundaries, how to reprogram your fears of setting boundaries, all these different things. Um, so these are really, really important. And then number four, we have to learn what we are addicted to. Okay, a trauma bond is like basically an addictive dynamic in a certain form. And at least in the shared principle that the conscious mind is often at war with the subconscious mind. The conscious mind is going, this isn't good. I don't think this is okay. I don't know if this stuff is healthy. And our subconscious is like, but we're going back into it anyways. And it can be very hard to break apart. And again, by the way, if you haven't already, please watch the earlier videos in the series about what a trauma bond is, because it will really shed some light on helping make these things very understandable in terms of the mechanics of what's happening at a subconscious level. Um, so you can think of it like there's something that hooks you in a trauma bond. And 
these specific things are either like we've talked about the the unmet needs that are so profoundly unmet for you that when somebody brings them along you get addicted to the form of that person it's like oh, one person's meeting my needs but when you look at that what that's telling you is that you are so out of relationship to those specific needs in the first place where you're not either meeting them yourself or advocating for them so that you can get them met by others. And so when somebody does come along and meet them, you get hooked on that person because you're actually getting hooked on the need being met. And when our brain associates specific needs with survival, the brain's like, well, we're surviving because this, you know, and, and a lot of our needs that the brain associates with survival, a lot of them have to do with attachment. So we're like, well, att to attach to others keeps us safe and it increases the chances of surviving. So when somebody's meeting our connection needs, if we don't have them met in different forms, we put up with things that we shouldn't because the brain will often prioritize its survival needs and filter out the red flags and the emotional things that aren't okay. And so that, again, how we change that is we get really clear on what those specific needs are, as specific as possible. And then we do the work to reprogram our relationship to those needs by meeting them, advocating for them consistently, repetitively, until we normalize it. Repetition and emotion reprograms until these things are imprinted in the way we show up in our natural patterns of behavior. Okay, we have a full needs course on this in a tremendous amount of depth and an advanced needs course in terms of understanding others' needs and communicating about them and all these different things. The next thing, the traits, like we talked about in part two of this video, the subconscious mind wants trait variety and wholeness. Again, survival, okay? Trait variety over time increased our chances at surviving. So we have that, like, that piece of our mechanics at work. And then um, if, if somebody's expressing our repressed traits, that's very attractive to us. And so we might stay because we fear breaking apart and losing the traits in another person that we've attached to that at a subconscious level we perceive as making us whole. And then we fear not being whole, feeling this big void, feeling like we have an identity crisis because we lose a part of ourselves. This is why we hear so much in relationships because we make these really profound attachments. Um, we hear so much in relationships about like two becoming one, or we hear like, oh, you know, um, I don't know, all these like phrases about people becoming whole through one another in relationships. Because to a certain degree, this is how the subconscious mind is perceiving its attachments and relationships. Um, and then the next really big thing that you have to see what's going on with or see if you're addicted to is the beliefs not addicted to but like um um like what's keeping you locked in your hook okay and this can also be the beliefs that keep you stuck so feeling like i'm going to be abandoned um if, or i'm i'm going to be lonely forever i'm going to be alone forever i'm never going to find somebody this good again i'm not going to find somebody i connect to in the same way um, and hopefully you don't because a trauma bond is not a healthy form of connection, right? Um, so these beliefs where we're like, no, we see so much pain in leaving. And because the brain is wired to avoid pain, we keep going back. We keep staying locked in and we try to attach there and, and protect ourselves from the pain associated with the beliefs being activated that hurt us if we leave. So we have to reprogram those beliefs and we have to do things for ourselves to meet needs so that we don't feel that way. Okay. If we're afraid of being alone, good. Develop support systems. You've just identified that. That's excellent. Develop support systems. Start putting them into action as quickly as possible. Make the phone calls. Who are you going to reach out to for support? Who can you trust and rely on? All these different things. And then also, let me work on that story and really question and equilibrate that story over time. Um, and, and notice whatever you're afraid of losing. Okay. And then number five, set your boundaries. Without boundaries, we're going to stay codependent or enmeshed, and this is going to keep us in a trauma bond. Codependency, enmeshment, lack of boundaries, lack of empathy towards self, um, very much all are a part of trauma bonding. And we also have really good codependency and enmeshment courses, by the way, um, inside the school. So that's important. And then lastly, work on healing the imprints that might make this a subconscious comfort zone. So for example, why are my alarm bells not going off as loudly as I think they should be from a conscious perspective when I logically look at the situation? What's happening that's, that's creating that? Oh, it's because I'm really cruel and unhealthy in the internal dialogue to myself. And so when somebody else treats me that way, my alarm bells are not firing to the same degree. 
And so that means I have to do that in our work ASAP. Like right now, it doesn't mean don't leave the situation, leave immediately and then do all this work as you go through your healing process so that you don't get back in, you don't have new relationships like this, et cetera. Okay, so you can make a list. What are the behaviors that I see this person treating me with? And let me do a check-in. Am I treating myself in the relationship to myself this way? And if so, what are my strategies for immediate change? And how can I rinse and repeat these over and over again so that I reprogram my entire neural paradigm and then I can enter into relationship dynamics where my new subconscious comfort zone is safety, health, these sorts of things. Okay. So I hope this is helpful. Obviously this is a very high level because it's just a short YouTube video, but I wanted to put some um, content out about this. We will be launching a course about this in the near future as well. That's going to be a lot more in depth with your workbooks and strategies and everything we have in there. Um, and I hope this was helpful. So thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.